Okay, in a previous video, we looked at something called Lagrange's theorem. So let's just recall one of the things that follows from Lagrange's theorem. If G is a finite group with a subgroup H, then the order of H divides the order of G. Now, Lagrange's theorem actually gave us a little bit stronger of a statement involving the index of that subgroup and the number of cosets and stuff, but this is what we're going to look at here. So the order of the subgroup divides the order of the group. It's a very, very important fact. So now, an obvious question to ask is, what about the converse of Lagrange's theorem? In other words, if we have a number d that divides the order of the group, can we find a subgroup with that order? Is it possible? In other words, can we find a subgroup for every divisor of the order of a group? And as we'll see, the answer to that is no, but which divisors have subgroups? That's like a bigger question that we're not going to get to um, in this video and not for quite a while because it requires a lot of really sophisticated um, algebra. Okay, so in order to answer this in the negative, we need to look at the following lemma, and this is going to help us uh, construct some sort of example of a group that doesn't have one of these subgroups for its divisors. So two cycles, sigma and mu in Sn, so that symmetric group, are the same length if and only if mu equals tau sigma tau inverse for some tau in Sn. In other words, they're conjugate to each other. So how I want to start this off is um, setting some sort of structure for sigma and mu. So let's set sigma equal to the cycle A1, A2, up to AK. So in other words, it has length K. And then let's say mu is equal to the cycle B1, B2, up to BK. In other words, it has length K as well. Okay, so now the first thing that we're going to do is go in the forward direction. Okay, so let's define tau as follows. So remember, tau needs to be an element from Sn. In other words, tau is some sort of bijection from 1 to n to 1 to n. And we'll define that bijection as follows. So we'll define tau of Ai is equal to Bi. So in other words, A1 gets sent to B1, A2 gets sent to B2, and so on and so forth, up to AK gets sent to BK. And then everything else is fixed. Every number between 1 and n that's not in this list is fixed. So good. Now it's pretty easy to check that that defines a bijection. I'll leave that to you. So now the next thing I want to do is claim that this does the job. In other words, we want to claim that mu actually equals um, tau sigma tau inverse in this case. But recall that these are elements of the symmetric group. In other words, they are functions. So two functions being the same means that they operate the same on uh, their domains. Okay, so in order to prove that, we want to take tau sigma tau inverse and apply it to things that are changed by mu. And notice things that are changed by mu are these numbers b1 through bk. So let's say this is bi. Great. So now notice as bi passes through tau inverse, it becomes ai. So that's going to give us tau sigma ai. Great. And then now as AI passes through a sigma, that's going to become AI plus 1. And now you might want to think that this uh, arithmetic is happening mod K. So if we're at the kth point, that's going to go back to A1. So AK plus 1 we can identify with A1. Great. And now let's apply tau again. And notice that's going to take us to BI plus 1. Great, but that's exactly what uh, mu does to bi. And since that is uh, happening for this arbitrary b, that tells us that mu is in fact equal to this tau sigma tau inverse. And so we have proven this forward direction. In other words, we found a tau that makes this true. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at the reverse direction. Okay, so now we're ready to look at this reverse direction. So in other words, we want to uh, suppose 
that, well, first of all, let's say sigma is equal to A1, A2, up to AK, and mu is equal to tau uh, sigma tau inverse. And what we want to show is that mu is also a K cycle. So show mu is a K cycle, just like uh, sigma is. Okay, so we can say mu on tau of AI, so that's going to be equal to tau sigma tau inverse on tau of AI. So notice this tau inverse and this tau are going to cancel, and that's going to give us tau sigma um, AI. Great. But we know exactly what sigma does. It sends AI to AI plus 1. So we can say that this is tau AI plus 1. And again, we're working mod K here, but I won't write that down. So notice that mu sends tau AI to tau AI plus 1. And so it follows that mu equals tau A1 up to tau A K. So it is that K cycle. And notice uh, we're not quite done here. If we, we also need to show that if we have a number that is not in the list tau A1 up to tau AK that in fact um, it's fixed by mu but that's pretty easy to show I'll let you guys think about that so we have uh, proven the reverse direction and now we're ready to construct our um, example that there is no converse to Lagrange's theorem okay so for our example we're gonna look at A4 in other words the group of even permutations of um, the numbers one to four. And we're gonna show that A4 has no subgroup of order six. Okay, so let's start off just recalling that the number of elements in A4 is equal to half the number of elements in S4. And that's true of AN and SN as well. And so that's gonna be one half. And then the number of elements in S4 is four factorial, in other words, 24. So the number of elements in A4 is exactly equal to half of 24, which is 12. And then let's also recall that A4 is made up of even permutations. So it's actually pretty easy to write down all of the elements of A4 before we get started. So we have the identity. And then recall that all cycles with odd length are even permutations. And so that means we can have all three cycles, like 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. That's one of them. 1, 2, 4. 1, 4, 2. That's another one. We can have uh, 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, uh, 4, 3. That's another one. And then we can have uh, maybe 1, 3, 4, 1, 4, 3. That's another one. And then finally, we can have uh, the combination of transpositions 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, and then finally 1, 4, 2, 3. And here we have exhausted 12 elements, and all of these can be written as an even number of transpositions. And we proved before that if you have an odd cycle, it can be written as an even number of transpositions. So these are the elements in A4. Okay, so now I'll clean up the board and then we'll get going with the actual proof. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the structure of A4 and we've proven that preparatory lemma, we're ready to prove that A4 has no subgroups of order. Six. So again, A4 has 12 elements, and let's suppose that we have a subgroup H of A4 that in fact has six elements. And now uh, notice that uh, that means that the index of A of H in A4 equals the size of A4 divided by the size of H, which is equal to 12 over 6, which equals 2. And so what that means is there are exactly two cosets, left cosets or right cosets. Great. And so now, since there are two cosets, we can write them down. We can say the left cosets 
are given by H and GH, where G is just any element that's not inside of H. And then the right cosets are given by H and HG, where again, that G is exactly the same um, element which is not in H. But it follows that since left cosets and right cosets partition the group, in other words, they partition A4, that means that GH and HG have to be the same. So when, let's reiterate, the union of these two is equal to A4, but these do not overlap. The union of these two is A4, but those do not overlap. But then you see that H is one of the parts of each of those disjoint unions, which means that GH is the same thing as HG. Okay, so now from here it follows that uh, GHG inverse is equal to H. And so that's just kind of taking this coset and right multiplying by G inverse, but doing that uh, to every element within this coset, and that's going to give us this kind of structure. Okay, so we have this conjugate subgroup is equal to the original subgroup. Okay, now the next thing that we want to notice is that there are three, there are eight three cycles. in A4. And so we listed all the three cycles before and you could have counted them up and there were eight. And so since there are eight three cycles in A4, at least one is in H. And so that's a requirement because um, H has six elements. Okay, so we have at least one of these three cycles is in H. And so now let's say that we know which one it is. It's one, two, three. But, uh, you know, we could just like pick any one of the three cycles and do a similar calculation. And so now uh, the next thing we want to notice is that since 1, 2, 3 is an H, that means that 1, 2, 3 inverse, which is the same thing as 1, 3, 2, is also an element from H. Good. And then also we can take conjugates with some of the elements from G. In fact, we can do 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, inverse. And it's pretty easy to check that that is equal to 2, 4, 3, and that's going to be an H. But since 2, 4, 3 is an H, 2, 4, 3, inverse is also in H because it's a subgroup. And then we can do kind of the same thing again, taking another conjugate. So we can take uh, 2, 4, 3 times 1, 2, 3 times 2, 4, 3 inverse. And now that's going to be equal to 1, uh, 4, 2. And that's going to be an element from H from, again, this thing that we uh, argued before. But that means that 1, 4, 2 inverse is also an element from H. But now let's start counting up everything that we have in H. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3 is in H. So by our argument that there is one three cycle in H, there is 1, 2, 3 inverse in H because it's a subgroup. And then uh, this guy is in H because we know the conjugate with any element from the group is in H by um, this rule right here. And then its inverse is in H. So we have 3 and 4. And then for similar reasons, these two elements are in H. Great. So we have six non-identity elements in H. But then we also know that the identity has to be in H. But if we have six non-identity elements and the identity element, then that means we have at least seven elements in H, which is a contradiction to our assumption that we have six elements in H. And that's a good place to end.